Alright, in this video I'm going to go over how I choose a companion, and uh, again, I'm assuming that people don't have a lot of experience with MMOs and with the Old Republic in particular, so if there's anything that, uh, anything that's very familiar to you, I don't mean to be insulting as if people don't know anything, I'm just trying to help out new players. And in short, the way I choose a companion is I try to choose a companion that uh, complements the character that I'm playing. Uh, I'm a tank on my Sith Assassin. You can be uh, one of two DPS disciplines or a tank discipline. I've gone tank. So I choose my companion to match that. You know, some people are going to be uh, obnoxious blowhards and laugh and mock anyone, laugh at anyone, mock at anyone who disagrees with their idea that you should play only a DPS character and use only a DPS companion and you're a noob, you're bad, you know, you're crap if you don't do that. Um, it works, you can do it, I've done it. I think it's a, a poor choice myself. Um, I, I rarely do it and because there's just no compliment to it and a, a big thing with this game and many MMOs it's called a Trinity game. If you're not familiar with that, it means uh, the, it refers to the Holy Trinity, uh, which in MMOs it means uh, tank, healer, DPS. Tank is supposed to generate threat and be able to take a lot of damage. DPS is supposed to do a lot of damage. They can't necessarily take much. And the healer who's supposed to heal people. So the companion system that's in the Old Republic is pretty cool because now you can get a companion that can fill one of these roles of the Trinity while you fill uh, a second role. And that's the way I like to play the game. I feel you're overlooking one of the main facets of the game if you just want to make this a death race. This isn't a first-person shooter game. This isn't a, a death race. It's just shoot them up and the, the last man standing wins kind of thing. Um, there's a lot more, I find that there's a lot more strategy, a lot more nuance to the game, a lot more tactics, and your choice of companion can reflect that. So I usually go with a healer on my assassin, on my... Jedi Shadow, who is also a tank. Um, if I have a damage-dealing character, I tend to prefer to have a healer. I can't heal. My character cannot heal. So, why not have a healer companion? Um, on all my healers, I will use a tank or DPS companion. Why would I run a healer with a healer companion? I've done it as an experiment, and yes, it works, but it's, it's just silly. And I see, it's like running two tanks. It doesn't really make sense. I really feel that somehow you are gimping yourself if you do that. Likewise, two DPS. Yeah, you'll have the highest DPS you can, but the game isn't all about DPS. That's why we have crowd control abilities. That's why we have uh, these things you know, they call defensive cooldowns. I hate that term, cooldown, the defensive abilities. Uh, you know, this is why we have healing. So that is my approach to it. If I'm running a DPS, character, I tend to have a healer with me, or maybe a tank on occasion. Um, running a tank character, I, I can't see not having a healer. It, to me, it makes perfect sense. It's the perfect complement. If I'm running a healer, it depends. I very often on my uh, sage and my sorcerer healers, I usually run a DPS companion on those. Um, on my scoundrel healer, and my uh, operative healer, I tend to run a tank. It allows me to get behind the enemy because the tank will hold threat. The enemy will most often be facing my companion. And both of those classes have attacks that are positional. You must be behind the enemy to use them. So my rationale is that the tank might do less damage than a DPS companion, but it allows me to use abilities that uh, require me to be behind the target much more easily. If the target's always facing me, I I can't use my abilities that require that I be behind the target. Now, you will hear that there's a particular companion that's supposed to be so overpowered in easy mode, and I believe it's utter crap. It is a companion that you pay for in the cartel market. Uh, her name is Treek. It's an Ewok. I don't find her that great. She does have two particular advantages I do like. I will use her on my uh, scoundrel sometimes. We use her on my operative sometimes. That's about it. The other advantage, uh, the one other reason I would use Treak is that many times when you're leveling, at this point in the game, companions are role specific. 
and you can't get any companion to heal you. You can't get just any companion to play the role of tank. You cannot get just any companion to be a DPS companion. And you only gain your companions as you level up and complete your story chapters, so it can be quite a long time before you get a particular companion to fill a role you may want. So you go through a lot of the game with a companion that really may not complement your character at all. So, you can get Treek at level 10. The two unique things with Treek is that she has uh, two stances unique to any, compa uh, any companion, and she also has AoE abilities that do not break CC. So you don't have to worry about turning off her AoE abilities that I've mentioned in another video. Let me summon Treek here. Now, I will expand her abilities. I don't think she's this great here. There she goes. I'm going to wait for it to go and cool down. I'm going to show you that heal again. That is her AoE heal. I don't feel that she's a weak healer. Her healers do, or her heals do as much healing as another companion, but she has a very irritating property to her AoE heal. It has a two second cast time. Uh, I am very frequently running around trying to reach one enemy or another or to get out of an AoE attack that, I, that is uninterruptible if an AoE attack cannot be interrupted or if I have an interrupt on cooldown and I cannot interrupt the AoE attack, I'm going to have to run out of that. If she's using that heal, I run out of it, and this happens very much. We just see how long this takes. That might not seem like anything as I'm just standing here, but when you're playing the game, running around fighting enemies, uh, that's, that's quite a delay. I found so often when I had used Treek in leveling as a healer, not a tank, that I'd run out of that. And I, I find that very annoying. Now she's better than nothing, for sure. If you don't get a healer like my assassin, did not get a healer until the end of Hoth, which is uh, quite a ways into the game. So I figured, okay, I'll get Treek. And I'll have a tank if I want, already, although I already had a tank. Uh, and I'll get a healer. So she's pretty much worth it if you don't have a healer companion. Um, it's going to change soon. We have the expansion 4.0 coming out in about a month, uh, a month in the future from when I'm making this video, and at that point any companion will be able to full, uh, fill any role. So Treek's uniqueness will somewhat diminish, uh, but not entirely, since she can be put into tank stance. And there's no other companion that can go into a tank stance and can also be put into a heal stance. So. Uh, there's a kind of unique use for her. You can send her in as a tank, and if she starts taking damage, you start taking damage, and you need healing, you can just, in the middle of the fight, switch her into the heal stance, and she'll start healing. That's a kind of pretty cool thing to do. Um, and it's good to be able to control your companion, just like I had mentioned in another video, the passive button. You can put your companion on a passive mode, and the companion will run back to you. And this is a way to get a companion to run out of an AoE attack. They will not know to do so on their own. They will stand in fire, explosions, anything. Um, and that's a way to get a companion to run back to you. So it's another way to control them. You can switch their stance in mid-fight if you want. Uh, that generally isn't too useful, but with Treek it does have a, 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 pretty, uh, a pretty useful uh, function to switch stances in the middle of a fight. But I just did want to show that uh, as, as a tank, she's really no better than any other tank, although she does have a self-cleanse, I believe. She can clean dots off of herself, which is pretty cool. Um, there's nothing wrong with her as a tank. Um, and her AoE, like I said, is really very, very convenient, since it will not break any uh, a sap or a mez that you put onto an enemy. Uh, but that's my philosophy with this. You can do whatever you want. If you want to play the death race game, go DPS, DPS, you know, by all means do. But I do feel that you're shortchanging yourself and not really using the game mechanics to your advantage. And whoops, my buff is running off here. I'm going to put that up. But that is why I always use different companions on different characters, because I want my companion to complement my character. I just feel it's redundant to have a companion that is doing the same thing that I'm doing. Uh, the game's based on the Trinity, the enemies you fight will be that way. You'll find enemies where you'll have one enemy doing damage and you'll have two or three little healers around them, for instance. It, 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 the whole game is set up that way. You're going to have enemies who are tanks. 
You're going to have enemies who are pure DPS. You will be fighting enemies who themselves are healers. And it really benefits you to make use of this in the game with the companion system, too. So if uh, anyone wants to ignore it, fine. I know some people are completely sold on the DPS, DPS, uh, you know, companion thing. Uh, I am not. I feel it can work, but I do feel that it's ultimately a handicap. It's no different to me than going tank, tank, or healer, healer.